Hello dear friends, welcome to another video of the Never Do Through the GUI what you can do through the CLI channel. Uh, I am Vagilis and today you are watching Web API Benchmarking .NET 6 Optimized Minimal API VS Rust Optimized Arctic Web with caching. So I have been receiving various comments and uh, requests about videos uh, I was requested to create a, a video with caching. I was requested to optimize further the .NET uh, minimal API. And this is what I indeed did. And hopefully this will be the last uh, video regarding comparing the .NET API with the Rust API. And I will uh, proceed to other comparisons like Go or a Spring, uh, Java Spring, etc. because I want to test those uh, tools too. So let's get into the video. Let me explain what optimizations I have uh, applied to the .NET API. So let me, let me come here. And one optimization that I applied is that I changed this from a, uh, from a class to a struct, to a simple struct. Uh, this is one optimization. And the second optimization, I was also told that uh, if uh, my method get users from the normal API returned an I enumer enumerable, the response would be streamed and that would be better. But in this, in the minimal API, this does not apply. I return directly with this uh, method, with this inline uh, function. So yeah, this is the one optimization. We moved uh, from a class to a struct. And the second optimization is the way we will run uh, our uh, API, which is this one. We will use this ready to ready to run uh, compilation uh, and see if it will provide any more uh, performance or uh, any more improvements to our API. So we are ready. Uh, I'm ready explaining. So we will have to come here. Uh, this is the two URLs that we will be using. Nothing is running currently. So let me grab the first command. And the first command is this one. Let me zoom in a little bit to show you what we are running here. I'm publishing the API with the release flag. And this configuration, as I said, publish ready to run true. And then we will just uh, run the released, the published .NET uh, DLL, the DLL. So this is our command. And in order for you to see that, uh, let me, this is the command. And as you can see, it runs the DLL, which uh, resides in the bin folder and in this path. But before we run it, I will show you that indeed the command runs as expected. So we have a bin folder here, which I will remove to make sure, sorry. As you can see now, we don't have a bin folder. So we are ready to issue our command, not this command. This is the command. Okay, as you can see, our API running and we are executing from within the bin folder, as you can see here. So we have a fresh build. Our API is available at this uh, URL. So let's check it. Let's come here. Yes, it is already working here. Excellent. So let's start benchmarking. We will start with uh, the, the Apache bench benchmark system let's check the monitor too
let's check the processes .NET 57% memory approximately 500 megabytes still the same 54, 55 we are about to finish in a bit okay we have our results let's come here and let's set I have uh, not applied any further optimization to uh, the Actix web it is as you know it was the only thing that we did ah I forgot to, to say yeah the caching let me show you the caching for the .NET API the caching is here as you can see we uh, only once calculate the users that we return and we just return the pre-existing users we don't calculate them in each request so this is the caching and let's check the caching for um, for the Rust uh, API as you can see again here I have the same function but what I do is I initialize uh, a global, uh, globally available variable the cast users and uh, we are returning these cast users from our handler the users handler as you can see so we are returning cast uh, data so let's go here and start our API it is running already let me get the command let me get the system monitor let me put it here CPU 23 currently memory 8.8 megabytes 10 megabyte so huge uh, memory difference and CPU usage it's about uh, the half half of what the .NET API was uh, and we are done so let's quickly check our results uh, uh, concurrency time taken for tests here we are this is the first thing we want Time taken for tests 47 seconds, 34 seconds, failed request 0, request per second uh, 10,000.5 approximately, 14,000.3, time per request 71 milliseconds, 97 milliseconds. These are the results that I have not looked into yet, so we will just bypass them and the last one is this one as you can see these are the percentage of requests served within a certain time in milliseconds we are better here overall yes and only the longest request as you can see is a little bit longer in um, in uh, Rust in Actix web so yeah, uh, all around uh, Rust is uh, again outperforming the .NET API with all the optimizations. So let's proceed to the second test, which will be the test with uh, the WRK tool. So let me grab the command and let me also prepare the system monitor here. And we are ready to execute the command for .NET API. The CPUs are maxing out as you can see. Our memory is about 500 megabytes uh, of RAM. CPU 80%, 82 currently.
memory the same and the CPU about 80% uh, stable. We are done. Let's move this here. Let's kill this. Let's run this. Let's get the command. Run and let's check. CPU 84 currently, memory 122 megabytes, 49. We are not maxing out the CPUs. Uh, if you remember, we had a, a problem with the, the threads that we resolved with uh, by declaring the number of threads equal we are done here okay so let me show you a little bit the code base just to remind you uh, if you remember in the initial videos we had uh, we did not declare here the workers and by default this is equal to the to the um, to the logical CPUs, which is 16 in my case, but when we change this and we use the physical uh, CPU cores, which is 8, the logical R16, the, the physical R8, uh, Actix Web uh, performed better. We are still not maxing out the CPUs, and I don't know why we don't max them out, but in any case, these are the results, so let's start comparing 40 seconds for both latency 55 milliseconds latency 32 milliseconds uh, max 79 here 909 here request per second 3.07k 4.99k max requests 5.57k 5.2k uh, and the total requests are 73,000 here no uh, sorry 732,000 332 and here it is how uh, 1 million uh, 100,091 so yeah, here we are in 700,000 uh, requests and here we are over a million. So we have a substantial, a substantial difference. Uh, the gigabyte uh, request per second 18,000.2, 29,000.7, substantial difference too. And transfers transfer per second 2.96 gigabytes 1.82. So as you can see across the board, uh, Rust is outperforming the dot, .NET API with all the optimizations that we applied. Uh, and this all came from this configuration with the workers uh, for the Actix web. And I am sure that if we play with more configuration regarding our runtime here, uh, our, our HTTP server, there are more uh, configuration that we can play with. I'm sure we can uh, uh, get more juice out of it uh, too. But yeah, overall, as you can see in both benchmarks, Actix, Web and Rust is outperforming uh, .NET. So in my case, again, I want to reiterate, I am a fan of Rust. Uh, I, I am not shy about it. And in general, I would uh, overall pick Rust for my API over .NET because as you can see, it is providing more performance with less resources. Plus we have the safety that I have uh, talked about in other videos and maybe I will uh, create a video regarding the memory safety of Rust 2. So this is 
all that I wanted to share. I hope you find it useful. Thank you for watching and have a great day.